Educational. I'm D2. With me is Caldi, bringing you the English class again. At English cast, excuse me. Again, we are piggybacking on the Chinese cast, so uh, those aren't us. Uh, we are uh, casting from our homes. Hope you are enjoying it thus far. We just saw Colento defeat Shadowy three games to two, and now we're going on to Tom six zero two two nine versus Chao Shen. And if you guys don't know Chao Shen, he is basically a Chinese cult favorite, and uh, that cult started that uh, his rise to fame started as we see Tom six zero two two nine there. Uh, it started when. Uh, NA played China in uh, a big team match that uh, Firebat, VLPS, Dog, Death Star, and Tare competed in. And basically, uh, uh, the American team more or less dominated, except for when they faced Chao Shen, who was able to snipe many Americans uh, before he was brought down uh, in the end. So, uh, had a really stellar score in that, and was basically the Chinese hope for them. And uh, he was expected by many to qualify for BlizzCon, unfortunately fell short. And uh, this is the first time we're going to see him since those uh, BlizzCon qualifiers, but for now, uh, we're going to look at Tom 60229s decks right now. Looks like he's playing Freeze Mage with uh, Reno Jackson as well as uh, Face Hunter and finally it's going to be looks like a uh, standard oil rogue with uh, no heal but but has the uh, belt in there as we do take a look at Chao Shen on the screen right now. Sorry I talked for a long time. Uh, Kaudi what do you think about this matchup in general? It's going to be a bit complicated. There's six different classes here uh, so normally it's not something you see. Uh, I think the only noteworthy thing about uh, Tom's deck was the double fireball and no torch, which is something you generally win one torch if you're running Reno Jackson. Uh, now, Chao Shen, double combo druid, fairly standard mid range paladin, fairly standard, and, and then we have the what looks to be the Reno lock, which is extremely strong, so this is definitely uh, an A class lineup. This is what I'd probably bring to this tournament. Or almost bring to the tournament if I was to pick only three classes. Uh, now, I guess in terms of noteworthy things, this is just... I believe this is exactly the deck from the meta snapshot. Yeah, from the Temple of meta snapshot, the Paladin list. <laughs> which got, got number one in the last snapshot, so... Yeah, templestorm.com, become legendary. Uh, <laughs> All right, yeah, big shout out to Temple Storm. Thank you again. Obviously, Kaldi being on Temple Storm, and uh, thanks again for allowing us to stream on their channel to get this these games to you. But uh, yeah, Chao Shen, extremely strong player. Obviously, Tom, multiple time offline event winner. So this is going to be a huge match. I mean, I don't know who I I want to pick here uh, to win the game or to win this overall series. Chao Shen, by the way, uh, I believe he goes to one of the top universities in China, basically the MIT of uh, China and uh, really strong in uh, math there obviously and he was one of the better uh, Grim Patron players before the nerf I'm not sure if he brought it to this tournament but uh, looks like we're getting started with our first game going to be that face hunter for Tom against the combo druid of Chao Shen which is going to be heavily favorable for the druid here but one of the worst matchups you can have with the face hunter but if you draw poorly as the druid there's some options now I feel like you generally want Keeper over Swipe, but in this scenario, Swipe would be good as well. Uh, but yeah, you were talking about Chao Shen being one of the stronger patron players before the nerf. Now Tom was known as one of the weaker patron players before the nerf. Hilariously playing Warzone Commander on turn 3 against Druid. <laughs> That's just something that happened. But yeah, so Tom is known as a great player with some decks, but just not as consistent with all of them. But he's definitely been turning it up since then, since that fiasco with turn three, uh, with turn three war song. Uh, definitely check out the affinity for that. But yeah, talk a bit about I guess tempo, Tom. If if you guys have been playing the ladder this season, I remember that yesterday I was playing the ladder and and ranks. Uh, I think it was rank sixteen. Yeah. One of the first games I played, I faced an optimized secret paladin. Rank 16, you know. Right. Which got a good curve and just kind of, you know, <laughs> was really, really strong. And why, why are you seeing optimized secret paladins at rank 16? It's because people are going online to timeofstorm.com and checking out the meta snapshot. It's brilliant. And I definitely recommend you guys check that out. Now, Chao Shen, full on bluffing here. Yeah, no question about it. Basically bluffing that uh, either he's aggro druid or that he has some sort of inner rate play that he could potentially make. 
and uh, even living roots here yeah but he definitely sells it i mean you would play the living roots if you yeah. had it so the bluff is a bit empty i feel like he's bluffing yeah Innovate, I don't think which you is fair enough yeah exactly i don't think you can really bluff living roots here you would never not play living roots on turn one if you had it in your hand but uh yeah more more likely bluffing that he has you know some sort of innervate shade maybe but doesn't want to commit to that something like that but uh yeah, just the full mind games on turn one of this best of five series. Now, Tom has an interesting decision whether or not he wants to go for the coin knife juggler or he wants to go for that abusive sergeant. Uh, obviously, he can coin, you know, two drop into, uh, or his, excuse me, his knife juggler into Glaive Zuka into uh, Animal Companion. But uh, yeah, kind of a tough decision here. Obviously, that abusive sergeant can trade into the Darnassus as well. And. Um, or using that glaive zuka, obviously, but uh, both players. I, I personally, yeah, uh, I, I personally like the uh, the abusive here. Mm -hmm. Like it's 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 too risky to go for the juggler. The game would just be over almost with a wrath because there's no follow up. But the right, right. the hand is just very unfortunate here. Now there is the option of wild growth. There is the option of donasis. I kind of like wild growth actually here. What do you think? Um, I think I like the donasis just to uh, contest the board right now. I mean. It kind of forces a response out of your opponent, and that can buy you time as well. Whereas uh, Wild Growth, uh, you're basically just throwing the turn back to your opponent and letting them do uh, whatever they want. And you obviously, and you also don't have a four drop in hand at the moment anyway. So uh, it would be a, obviously a lot different if you had you know Pilot Trader in your hand and really you know favored getting that card out. But as it stands, uh, he can just Wild Growth and Hero, or I guess it would just be Wild Growth next turn if uh, the Darnassus dies. But uh, yeah, I think I think going this order is probably a bit better to get the minion out first. My idea would be to look at the Darnassus plus hero powering the abusive mm -hmm. as a four drop and guaranteeing that because if he if he uh, has yeah quick shot or or several other things here, you're just gonna be stuck with uh, losing out on the hero power because yeah let's face it if he'd gone for the wild of last turn, mm -hmm. he could have now also hero powered down the abusive but it's obviously very hard for him to know. Uh, beforehand because he doesn't know the, the opponent's hand so maybe I'm a bit biased because I can see both hands but yeah this seems even this seems kind of tough here but I'll go the hero power yeah. again I think the, yeah. the other the other consideration is that if you do go for the wild growth, then your opponent um, gets to play essentially whatever they want. So maybe he could have gone for speaking of Tom, could have gone for a coin animal companion or gone for the knife trickler and um that would have been difficult to deal with other than using your swipe, and then you're giving the initiative back to your opponent once more. So uh, I think that's probably what was coming into Chao Shen's mind. Uh, needed to get that minion out uh, as quickly as possible to kind of just slow down the opponent. Now he's stuck with another tough decision here. Uh, obviously, it can go a number of ways, uh, you know, whether he wants to swipe here off curve or go with that Belcher, but uh, then you're kind of, you know, allowing that Leoc to get its work in with that extra, you know, damage buff. So, uh, again, what would you do here? I'm kind of leaning towards the Belcher, but it's a super tough call, though. I guess, yeah, the Belcher would die, but do you value Swipe above Belcher? Generally, because the Swipe could get a lot more mm. value next turn, I feel, because if you can just suffer through this one, but then you have no taunt, so you'll be in a full-on race. Whereas, if you go Swipe now, you could just start racing your next turn. But I think to notice the... the Animal Companion is about the strongest card you have as Acro Hunter against Druid. Mm -hmm. And and Tom managed to drop both of them. On the flip side though, there was no Hunter Creeper or, or Scientist, which are also very strong cards against uh, Druid. But he gets the work in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the one of the things I guess Chao Shen was thinking about as well here is that um this Belcher, the earlier you drop it, the less likely your opponent is to have an owl. So most likely it's going to get it's going to provide you that full seven damage healing, and then uh, you, obviously you can play on curve with the swipe and hero power the next turn. So that's probably part of his thinking. Uh, looks like we got another Leoc here, never huffer, and um, Chao Shan in a bit of trouble. These guys are pretty beefy. I mean you don't always want Leoc, but obviously, but uh, I mean these guys are pretty hard to deal with. Uh, I, I mean, I suppose he could take care of them with the uh, Force Nature Innervate Hero Power, but uh, you're throwing away your Innervate, and you're, again, giving the initiative to your opponent. Good news for Chaoshin, though, is it's turn 6, and he's still in 25 health. I think to mention, though, is, is the uh, sequencing last turn. He went for the uh, Glaive Suka first, mm -hmm. and that's only better 
if he hits the abuser sergeant and Roger Leoc. So it's a 50-50, and then a 1-3 in right. on top of that. So five times out of six, it's better to go for the Amal Companion first. So a bit wow. of a rough, rough call there, it seems to be. I suppose um, if he gets the Huffer, it doesn't matter... Uh, I mean, he doesn't want he doesn't want the buff to hit hit a huffer, right? Uh, although I guess he could just attack in first, but um, yeah, you could attack in first. That's a, yeah. Right, right. Okay. In any case, uh, we are going to get uh, oh, not going to get a clear. All right. So Chaoshan is going to mostly clear, but not clear the entire thing. Has that swipe? Realizes that he or he's willing to take an extra three damage here. Um, well. I guess oh I guess he's taking an extra one damage I guess because he would be hero powering it and you know using his light total anyway so um, in the end it might work out for him but he is kind of committing himself to using his swipe right now otherwise he is going to be taking that extra damage. Yeah, he seems to be saving up for the Azure Drake Innovate swipe combo, uh, which should make things fall apart for Tom pretty quickly. Now uh, we see Tom committing. I think this is. 100% of what you need to do in this scenario. Go for the hero power. I really like that myself. Seems yeah. like a good idea, but it's a bit all in. But I think it's something you need to do. A second innovate, brilliant. Uh, draws first, correct sequencing. Sorry? <clears throat> ah, no, nothing. I was just looking all at right. maybe potentially going for the Ancient of Lore and then in double innovate uh, swipe. But um, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing, I guess, in the end. Chaoshan hovering over that innervate, maybe use, wanting to use a hero power, but uh, yeah, after Chaoshan, um, it looked like he was in the back foot the entire time, but I mean, his board, the, the sequencing of plays, or the sequencing of uh, this game so far, you know, it's just been just annoying enough for Chaoshan, or for Tom to deal with what Chaoshan has thrown out, uh, thrown out that, uh, you know, Chaoshan has been able to maintain a decent life total. Uh, obviously, with that Darnassus, Tom had to to uh, deal with that right away, uh, and then the the sludge belcher a couple turns later, he, uh, Tom had to deal with that. So you know every single turn, it's just been one thing after another that Tom has had to deal with. And it's been less damage to the face. However, now with the arcane golem coming out, uh, games are starting to end a bit here. Chao Shen one damage off lethal though with this uh, savage or pickup. Kind of a tough call here. Yeah, he may need to possibly heal even. Yeah, what if you just heal here and then actually attack the face with the Azure Drake? It's a strong play, yeah. Because if you trade with the uh, Arcane Golem, you're really hoping that you're... Mm -hmm. Although I guess you could trade too, because if you hero power the face, you, then your opponent's at 21, and then he still dies to combo. But that mm -hmm. really relies on your um, uh, Ancient of Lore living, but it typically lives in the situation, so um, I think either play might be okay. Although, you're not really going to die from the 17. This is really tough, though. I mean, which what do you think is a better play? Hitting face or trading right here? I'm going to go with hitting face, actually. Yeah. Right. Well, much more. Because I feel like you're playing a bit scared if you trade. But and Chaoshan, if you go for the face, I'm going to be really impressed. Yeah, it goes for the face there. Realizes his opponent has three cards and seven mana, so unlikely to be able to you know get the lethal. And also, unlikely to be able to clear this board at the moment. And, uh, yeah, it looks like Tom has really nothing to do, no way to clear this board, and so that's going to be a win for Chao Shen once uh, Tom is able to finish his turn. No question. I mean, if we think about the combination that would be lethal there, we're looking at what Arcane Golem, double quick shot wouldn't even be enough, you know? So, well played to Chao Shen. Yeah, definitely. He's really impressed me, but generally if we think, think about uh, Agro Hunter, it's, or Face Hunter, it generally doesn't do well against through mm -hmm. it, and the the win scenario oh, is uh, <laughs> the BM ooh, comes up <laughs> uh, full on BM. But yeah, the win scenario is if your opponent, if the druid doesn't draw wild growth, Darnassus, or uh, the innovate. Mm -hmm. Generally, the Darnassus is not as important as the wild growth. Uh, but yeah, here we saw Chao Shen draw all three of them. So yeah, exactly. It's just too Pretty much, much perfect, to deal right? with. You know? Pretty mm -hmm. much, I mean, uh, sometimes you draw too much, uh, too much ramp. But he had the perfect mixed uh, pick, 
perfect mix, excuse me, of ramp and, you know, minions to play and spells to use that game. So uh, as good as you're basically going to get when you're a druid facing off against a hunter. And uh, even Tom with a decent hand wasn't able to take that match because of that super solid draw from Chao Shen. Uh, it is going to be 1-0 lead for him. And uh, Tom is left with his mage, hunter, and rogue, whereas Chao Shen now picks from paladin and warlock. I guess another thing to mention is this, the Reno Lock, and that's such a strong deck. I'm excited to see how that goes. You have so many different card abilities here. One Shadow Flame, one Hellfire, one Demon Wrath, even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you even see uh, Twisting Nether in that uh, deck as well. But uh, yeah, we will see what he is able, what he comes with. with. Has triple heal in hand, actually, at the moment. And um, how do you... I've actually not really seen this particular matchup too much, uh, that being obviously the Oil Rogue versus the... Uh, Reno Warlock. Um, I imagine it would be good for the Reno Warlock just because you run the rogue out of damage. Mm -hmm. Generally, yeah. Um, I know about Dragon Warlock against Rogue. Mm -hmm. I used to play Rogue a lot when Dragon Warlock was popular and Rogue was slightly favored against Dragon Warlock, but I feel like it's going to be tougher. It's going to come down to the AoE. It's going to come down to the Draw for Tom, does he draw the sprint? Um, he probably is expecting to face Sue, I would have thought. So, generally, you wouldn't really want uh, Earthen Ring against this. Now, Shambi Chow, Implosion, Implosion is kind of weak. Shambi Chow, not bad. Yeah, so, kind of mediocre hand here. Yeah, yeah Shambi Chow getting, getting to play out in turn one is pretty nice. Um, Tom, really interestingly, kept the Earthen Ring Forest here and that Violet Teacher just to. Uh, maximize you know the amount of minions in his hand really interesting play though he does pick up the van cleave it'll be interesting to see if he goes for the immediate 4-4 or uh, waits for the chance to get something bigger it's a tough call here uh, but yeah i'm kind of liking tom's hand though he seems to have everything he needs i wonder if he's gonna go at uh, or turn two even uh edwin into possibly a, a uh other thing there into well, it wouldn't be the best thing. Maybe if he gets a prep, it would be possible. Just go YOLO for an 8-8. Yeah, I mean, well, going YOLO for an 8-8 is pretty risky because obviously uh, this Reno Warlock is going to be having at least one BGH. Well, I say at least. It should be one BGH, but... Um, Chao Shen doesn't play the Zombie Chao. Do you understand why? I think it has to be to not reveal what he's playing. Huh. Taking a handlock, maybe that's it. Yeah, realizing that that could give away what he's doing, and, um, hmm. At the same also, time, yeah, though, that yeah. Zombie Chow does provide, a, you know, a bit of, you know, resistance. He's able to do some combat on the board. Obviously, he wouldn't be able to deal with three threes very well. So, uh, I guess maybe that's his, his uh, reasoning as well, because there's nothing that Zombie Chow trades well into at all. Actually, probably didn't want to see that Zombie Chow at all, if that's the case. I Many have opened seeing so far from Chao Shen. There's a lot of bluffs, a lot of mining games. We saw him hover over cards again and again here. Good thing he didn't prep the the, the fan like I was talking about. <laughs> Chao Shen tough to actually big big him under here. So I think it was definitely a bluff for him to skip the zombie Chao. It's a tough call. I mean, the rogue has a relatively easy time to deal with the zombie Chao generally if you don't have a follow up to it. Uh, Backstab deadly poison either or or. <laughs> Pretty common. Even he gives himself to, to attack, he could just attack with the 1 1 weapon a few times. Uh, yeah, this is a tough call for Chao Shen. I think maybe tap might be, be the correct play here. Yeah, I mean, tap and do nothing could be something, but you take a, quite a bit of damage doing so. He could play the Temple BGH, but uh, in China, Dr. Boom in Rogue is somewhat common, so um, that could be something that's in his mind right now. Obviously, Ta Tom uh, 60229 is from the Taiwan region. So it's a bit different, and it uh, looks like Chaoshan goes for that BG, doesn't want to uh, just leave his opponent with, you know, a free, uh, just having the board by himself. Was risking the backstab and the deadly poison. Tom has to use the eviscerate, which is, uh, I mean, he picks up that card, which is nice for him, but at the same time, I don't think Chaoshan is too sad about that, because now that's an eviscerate that's not going to his face later in the game to uh, burn him out. Yeah, I'd be pretty happy about that. Uh, I think to mention is... is Okay, it's going to be a 4-7, but it's not as vulnerable to sap. 
Now the Belcher is pretty perfect here. One thing, uh, I mean, Chao Shen does have a pretty clean kill using this uh, Defender of Argus. Uh, I kind of like, like Chao and Defender of Argus even better, yeah, to kill the Violet Teacher. But yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, but uh, yeah, th that's exactly what I was thinking. Um, you could kill the Violet Teacher by doing this play. However, if you buff the Zombie Chao, you kind of give a free kill for this uh, Van Cleef onto there, and you don't have one damage in hand. Um, I guess other than the Implosion or maybe... A demon rat, but that obviously hurts your own minions as well. No question here now. And, and Tom is, is uh, from Taiwan. Probably not the strongest player from Taiwan, even. Yeah. Um, been really solid in the qualifiers. But now Taiwan is not known as the strongest region in Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. But Tom has definitely been showing, uh, I've been proving that wrong. I remember well, there was a scene from a qualifier, uh, it, it was a handlock mirror. Where Owl was played on turn two, on curve, with nothing on the board. <laughs> I remember that there's a specific uh, thing that was mentioned. It was in a final in a Taiwanese tournament. Mm. But yeah, it may have also been just been a misclick, but it's something that European pros talk about a lot. Now, Demon Wrath <laughs> wouldn't be too bad here if you trade. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to go for the trade, going to get the Savants on board, which is pretty annoying for a rogue to deal with. Um, it would seem counterintuitive, right? Because, uh, you know, to deal with Sylvanas, or you, I mean, you put Sylvanas on the board with uh, nothing from your opponent, but a lot of times, you know, rogues like to be efficient uh, with their removal, and that means using things like SI7 Agent, and uh, that's not an option for Tom. You know, he's not, not able to get the SI7 Agent out to finish that off, uh, because obviously he gets stolen. Can't use things like Tinkers on the same turn as well because obviously uh, you, know, you get a buff minion soul in that situation. So even something like Fan Eviscerates, I mean, you're using your entire turn and you're giving back uh, initiative to Chaosin. So I kind of like just playing out the Sylvanas here and making life difficult for Tom. Yeah, absolutely. Here, um, I think you mentioned yeah, the Rocks have a very easy time of dealing four damage, but when it comes to five, it's it's a lot tougher when there's a Taunt minion up because. You'd think about something like Backstab Deadly Poison would be the easiest way to go about that now. You start with the fan, and then go for the SI. Mm. Contest this, but it's not clean at all. Right. Alright, so Chao Shen does have the ability to use uh, Implosion here. And uh, mm -hmm. if he misses, maybe you try to go for Mortal Coil off the Dark Peddler. <laughs> but uh, yeah, has, has a couple options here. Probably wants to keep this Sylvanas alive. And uh, again, the easiest way to do the two damage, the, the final two damage, to the Sylvanas would be that SAS 7 agent. So um, I think it's perfectly fine to uh, keep the threat of the Sylvanas on board. I think there's also an option just to implosion the Sylvanas. <laughs> Go face and implosion the Sylvanas. Right, right. Or you could Bane of Doom your Sylvanas. Bane of Doom the Sylvanas, wow, yeah. Next level. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad, yeah. Objectively, it's not bad. But I like this though also from Chaos, and this seems strong. Yeah, just uh, put a, a blocker in the way, and uh, either your the SI7 agent has to be thrown in, or uh, you know it's there's still tension on the board with that Sylvana. So it uh, looks like so, uh, Tom is going to go for the prep sprint. We do see a Doctor Boom in hand, so uh, Chao Shen going to be pretty sad that he used his uh, big game hunter earlier, though it did eat up an eviscerate. So you know, in the end, not the worst situation for him that he has to face a Doctor Boom. He might be able to deal with it kind of uh, the hard way. But uh, what does Tom do here as we see the, the rocket shark come onto the screen and block our view again? But uh, yeah, has uh, some, some options here. Looks like it's just going to be sap and uh, a clear onto this Sylvanas. is probably the most clean way he could have dealt with this. You know, question about that here. Um, no Reno though in play, so I think this might be possibly uh, looking a bit rough on Chaosin. He gets the Void Walker and the Mortal Coil. I feel like the Mortal Coil would be kind of strong here. That's probably what I would keep if I was him. Mm. But he may have a second Mortal Coil in hand in his deck. So that would limit Reno, but it should be fairly easy to get rid of the Mortal Coil loads only one mana. So he doesn't feel worried about that. I mean, currently there'll be one in hand and one in deck, so the Reno will still work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it looks like it's a uh, pretty. <laughs> Uh, cool play here by Tom. Going to be using Backstab and Fan to get rid of this pretty cleanly, and uh, that's bas that's the uh, <laughs> the efficiency of Rogue, right? You're able to make these really clean plays and deal with your opponent's board with all that removal that they have in hand. And uh, now Chao Shen is on the back foot once again. Looks like he's going to go for the oh misses. 
Demon Rat can, can help him out here though, but it's, it's not clean. He has the option also just mortal call and, and, uh, and, and, and gang boss. I wouldn't mind that Bane of Doom also possibility. Right. I mean, you're not really worried like... about spell damage too much right here, right? Unless you're worried about dying, which is unlikely to happen since you've already seen prep. I mean, typically it re requires a prep for you to die here. So, yeah, I don't I don't think you should be too worried about dying right now. So maybe, yeah, like you said, just the Mortal Kombat and Imking boss would be reasonable. Yeah, let's, let's say he probably wishes the Euro hit for three there and then to model call the the Thalmash, but it's not game breaking, I think. I, I would have I would go with Bane of Doom here. Mm, right, right. Okay, let's see what he gets off of it. It's going to be uh what's that thing called again? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough call. It's, uh something guard, right? Felguard? Fel Felguard? Is that right? I think so. Right, something like that. Felguard. Um, it's a 3 mana 3 5 that, that destroys a mana crystal. But uh, alright, you can look, <laughs> look that up. It is Felguard, yeah. Alright, Felguard, mm -hmm. alright. So, uh, pretty solid minion overall. Gets a toss dingo out of that, so not not too bad. Um, good stat target, though, for Tom. Though, I think Chaoshin can play it next turn and he'll still have 10 mana the following turn. So, I don't think it matters too much. In fact, that's actually not bad to play here. It's a basically a 3 mana toss dingo with no downside from here on out. Yeah, and also gets buffed by Malganis even. Uh, but Emperor coming down, you'd think it's preferably want to deal with the Ash Drake, it's a bit rough, but I mean, he can go for the taunt on top of that, it's going to be really strong. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it does have the possibility for that strong turn, however, uh, this, you know, Azure Drake is pretty, I mean, it's pretty annoying, right? Do you, I mean, you don't really want to Scythe until that, especially because there's things in the future, mm. and, uh, you know, Playing the th Thoros and feels good to get everything cheaper, but at the same time, you know that just leaving spell damage on the board is a a big threat. So, um, Chao Shen, you know, you can see him looking at the sidebar here, wondering why there was a sap, and wondering if there's you know an ulterior motive for Tom's play. Maybe he's uh, worried about dying right here as Chao Shen. I think there's no question about that. Yeah, I mean, any sort of oil um, flurry type of play would be devastating with prep, but we see that Tom doesn't really have what he needs to have to finish off this game, and it's going to be problematic for him to deal with this Emperor. Prep is strong though, yeah. Uh, what can he do here? Realistically, he can't really clear. Is he going to just... Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he has a uh, perfect amount of cards to be able to just prep sprint and tier. Chaos are not really too happy about this situation. And, yeah, I mean, Tom still has six mana to be able to do what he wants in the situation. Can go for the Tinker and Flurry to just clear this board and get, you know, seven damage to face. Uh, not to mention the five from the Flurry. So, yeah, it looks like he's just going to go for it. Uh, going to be just 12 damage to face right here, right now. And Chao Shen, you know, is going to be feeling the heat. No question. Now we have to be seeing the... Uh... Uh, as I haven't saw, but I think to mention though is there is, I believe, one Molten Giant in this deck in this Reno lock. But where is Reno Jackson? <laughs> we need Reno Jackson right now. Yeah, Reno Jackson would be an amazing card to have at the moment. Uh, speaking of the damage from Tom, if Chaoshan uses the Siphon Soul here, which I imagine uh, he might go for that, uh, he won't be in danger of dying, at least as like we see from Tom's deck. And uh, He could also just go, sorry, I to cut you off. Uh, I think he could also just go for Jaraxxus, attack, uh, Mortal Coil, and gone for Doom, uh, for an Infernal. Mm -hmm. He stays at 8 health, 1 more health, and now he has an Infernal on the board. Oh. I mean, or it's Jaraxxus. But yeah, I mean, that's obviously, could have been the play, but in any case, Tom is able to top deck that second Deadly Poison. He's going to attack the face and Blade Flurry 4-5. And that's going to be game for Tom. He ties up the series one game to one. And we are in a dogfight here. Chao Shen with his Paladin and Warlock left. Tom with his Mage and Hunter left. Yeah, no question. The draws were a bit unfortunate here, I felt, for Chao Shen. I like to just play, though, especially the Bane of Doom. He missed out on the... Uh, I, I guess even the Zombie Chao now in hindsight. Uh, he rolled two on the important implosion that ended up not being too good for him. Tom ended up having kind of a strong hand, I think, overall. He kind of had a curve that, that filled out nicely into the uh, late game finisher. So everything kind of went right for Tom here. And he's going to go now for, I believe, the Freeze Mage against Paladin, which is really strong for the Freeze Mage. Yeah, definitely strong for the Freeze Mage here, though... 
Um, it will be interesting to see. Do you remember how many heals there were in this uh, paladin to maybe come back? There's one heal bot and one Lothip. Yep. Right. So that's basically all that uh, Chaoshin has to work with to kind of deny uh, what Tom has to offer. Um, I guess Chaoshin... I guess Leon hands. Sorry, sorry. It's also Leon hands. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, I mean. You know, despite that healing, I think Chao Shen, obviously, he's going to be looking to finish out the game as quickly as possible. Uh, just put pressure on the freeze mage. That's really all you can do as the paladin in this situation, as the mid-range paladin. And uh, Chao Shen kind of contemplating his hand right here, um, wondering what to keep. He doesn't know, obviously, that his opponent is freeze mage. He's only seen the rogue and the hunter so far. So, wondering what to keep. We we know from our vantage point that uh, keeping the Quartermaster wouldn't be a bad keep here. Uh, because most likely would be able to get off that combo. But, um, gets an okay draw. Is able to potentially put some pressure on with this. Uh, Zombie Chow obviously something that can be on the board to contest. Things like Mad Scientists and Loot Hoarders. But obviously healing your opponent as the Freeze Mage. Not the best situation. Yeah, so by putting the pressure on really early and, and keeping the pressure up... Uh... Now, this is favorite for the freeze mage, no question, but it's not a complete walkover like freeze mage is against dragon priest or against secret paladin. I mean, I think to mention, yeah, there's going to be a heal bot, there's going to be a lay on hands, uh, again, and against the doomsayers, Tiaoshin does have one equality and one owl. We need to draw those, and that'll probably be what the game is about. We see one uh, novice engineer and one loot holder, so yeah. You know this is going to be the, the Reno deck, and Reno may be important in this uh, in this game just to buy Tom more time. But I'm, it's looking good for Tom though overall in this series. I feel like uh, the Reno lock may struggle potentially against Agro Hunter. I think it's not favored. So I like Tom's idea of just going for Freeze Mage because it's strong against both the uh, Paladin and the Warlock. Also waiting until the uh, uh, I guess the Druid is out, because the Druid would demolish this freeze, uh, freeze mage. Now, we have the option of possibly coin uh, coin sweater or, or muster. I think muster is, is vastly stronger in this case. Yeah, and we see Chaoshin kind of agonizing here. Um, he didn't know what secret or what uh, mage it was at the beginning, but now he's pretty sure after seeing a mad scientist into... Uh, an Orchid Intellect, not something you typically do as, you know, Tempo Mage, even though you do have those cards, typically you want to be making a splash onto the board, so um, Chao Shen not liking the fact that he's into this unfavored matchup, and uh, yeah, like he said earlier, Tom definitely wanting to, going for the strategy of he's going to take this game, and then from there, get as many chances uh, to win with his Hunter as possible. Uh, Chaoshin, on the other hand, just kind of try to make this work as best as he can. And Tom is not happy to see the Muster for Battle come up and a lot of pressure coming onto him right now. This is an easy uh, thing for me to look at. If you look at, you know, potentially taking two damage, the thing about uh, playing against Freeze Mates is the health from uh, 30 to 20 is completely. Uh, you, you can just throw it away. It doesn't matter if you're a 30 or 20 generally because the Alexstrasza is going to be coming down. And if you have 20 health or 30 health, it doesn't matter against Alexstrasza. Whereas below 20, it's every life is critical. Now we have no Frost Nova for Tom. We have a strong board here. Could it possibly double Doomsayer be what he needs? Then he has no way of clearing. Uh, there's the option of just Novice Engineer or potentially even Acolyte. Ping, I think then he's going to be leading another ice block so this is yeah this is about the 40% scenario that the paladin needed to win this match yeah absolutely uh, it's looking really bad for him in this situation and it looks like Tom's going to go for the immediate heal with that uh, zombie chow and uh, how much damage do we have? We have 12 on the board at the moment and no additional damage in hand from Chao Shen so unable to pop the block this turn uh, I imagine he's just going to go for as annoying a board as possible. Probably kill off this Acolyte before it draws too many cards for Tom, and then just play the Shredder, and then go the rest phase. What do you think? It looks strong. I uh, don't, don't mind that. We put him down to 7 health, and, and if Tom freezes, he is going to be staying out of lethal range. If he doesn't freeze, he's going to be uh, needing another ice block. 
So that's happening. Chow's been putting all the easy stuff away early on. Yeah, this is correct. If he has a freeze, he's going to survive. If he doesn't, he's not going to survive. So it's just might as well throw away the uh, now kind of cold drawn here. Yeah, also puts the shredder on the middle to the right side, uh, not completely in the middle. Uh, and uh, that's basically to buff as much stuff as possible, but also sort of play around cold and cold. Uh, but yeah, Tom fortunate to pick up that uh, that Frost Nova to be able to, you know, potentially clear off this board. And now it's looking like he's uh, got a strong or a stronger foothold, much stronger than he did a, a turn ago. Yeah, that's that's spot on here. I think even saving the weapon might be important and I want to talk about why and that's because you could then a quality and kill a doomsayer later on uh, with with the weapon whereas you're probably going to be going for Dr. Boom next turn you have 6 health so that will make you doomsayer proof because if you go for a doomsayer you could just end turn and everything clears and you get the booms to bombs to face but yeah I don't know if he isn't Ooh. planning on going for the uh, Master of a battle next turn, then why not save the weapon and have more options? Yeah, that's true. Uh, I guess he figures he's. I mean, he just saw the the uh, Dooms here, so unlikely he's going to see another one, and likely to see the Master for battle uh, somewhat soon. Chao Shen now uh, he's shaking his head. He's not happy with what he sees, and uh, I mean, what what do you think he's worried about here? Seeing that Thorsten, uh, what could get discounted here? I guess the uh, the Alex draws on the following turn to kind of. You know, push him out of range, but uh, yeah, I, I imagine yeah he's just gonna go for the strongest play possible, and that is to play the Doctor Room. Has really no way to kill the Thorsten anyway, so just might as well do the most powerful thing that you can. Yeah, I mean Chowson is playing really well, but he's kind of acting like a bit of a drama queen here, getting really upset about minor things. So emotional, this player. Right, but uh, Tom going to go on the offensive, not even healing himself. And, uh, I mean, realize, Tom probably realizing that Shaosun doesn't have any quality in hand, he probably would have used it to, uh, you know, deal with the Doomsayer earlier. And now Shaosun is really worried about his potential life total. Does pick up the Belcher, uh, which would be pretty nice. Oh, completely kills off the Thorson there with the Boom Bot. It's really nice for him, but, um, yeah, I mean, uh, that Belcher just might end up saving him here. Although he's a little bit concerned with uh, whether or not he should be going for... Um, I uh, think this was a mistake, sorry. To, uh, I think what I would like him to go for would be altering the uh, Alexstrasza and going for the Consecrate, because then you proc it down to one and keep the Boombot alive. Mm-hmm. Well, Obviously, I mean, what he could not? do yeah. is Aldor as well as uh, Belch. I guess that doesn't really make too much sense, right? Because if you're worried about dying from direct damage in hand, then it's not going to matter if you Aldor the Alex Raza. But I guess it makes it harder for, to get to this Belch in the first place. Let's see if Tom can pick up Lethal. Uh, Going to be the zero mana novice engineer first. A free draw, obviously. Does not pick it up. Picks up the Ice Barrier instead. And uh, looking at the board right now, that bring up to 12, and uh, I believe Chao Shen would have enough to kill him in that instance. So, cannot just play the Ice Barrier here. Could go with the Ice Barrier, Cone of Cold. Um, if we flip this around, then go for the play that I wanted to go for, in terms of going for, uh, you know, both one wants to f uh, Consecrate, then both one wants to face, putting to one down to one health. He wouldn't have options now. Yeah. The options that he does have right now, I mean, he, now he can ping in Cone of Cold and be fine. Oh, looks like he's going to go for just the Cone of Cold and Doomsayer. Okay. I mean, this is risky, yeah. So what is what can Chaoshin do from here? He is uh, one damage short, it seems like, of being able to clear the... Uh, the Dooms here right uh, now. I think there's no reason to clear Dooms here. I think what I'll, I'll just want to look at now is this uh, Master of Battle. That is really all in though. No question about that. It's, it's so, so all in. As if you have a Reno, you just lose the game. Uh, but now Leon Hans here yeah, figures at this point it's too late to do anything about the Dooms here. Keep her out door. Uh, keep her old man here. We nice to have that last turn. Uh, but yeah, he'll put on top of this. Could maybe. Chaosin just outlast 
Tom here? Maybe, I mean, potentially. Looks, uh, though, I mean, this ice barrier is obviously a big deal, as well as uh, Tom being able to get two fireballs from this Antonidas. Chalish, another thing that's probably in his mind right now, seeing that Novice Engineer probably uh, tells him almost for certain that uh, this is going to be a Reno version of the uh, Warlock deck, so... Um, yeah, that's something that's probably in the back of his mind right now. He could get Reno at any point, any point, but uh, yeah, this is going. This is a really back and forth game. Tom, you know, doesn't have the requisite damage to kill Chaoshan right now, though he does have the the damage over two turns. But uh, he doesn't know that Chaoshan has that heal bot to heal out of range, and this is just kind of this is crazy, honestly. No denying that equality on top of that, but there's nothing left to equality at this point. Both Doom Seer is out, Antonair is out, Ice Raza is out. Maybe Reno would be something that would be equality, but yeah, I mean, when you heal bot now, what's going to be the follow up? A Consecrate even? Is that what you want to yeah, go I for? Yeah, I think you might use Consecrate just to uh, not miss the damage here and make your mini bot just as annoying, but looks like he's just going to go for a bigger board, save the Consecrate for later in case his face gets frozen, potentially. Though he is filling up the board, which means he can't potentially use the uh, the Quartermaster here. If it, if no, yeah, I want to awesome talk about the uh, I'll talk about the uh, slide knot that he had in the end, Tiaosh, and I think he realizes that he should have, shouldn't have hero power there. Yeah. And the reason is that he can't go for the Quartermaster, but now Fireball to the face, and he has a 13. Is it not going to work with Tom? I mean, he, he just had to pick up damage, right? Oh, wow, True Silver's are really big oh. here to get extra damage in and to be able to heal. Really big card for Chao Shen. But um, we'll see what Tom goes for. If he decides to use the blizzard here or not, what does he pick up? Picks a fireball. Ooh, that's, that's not enough damage, but uh, yeah, it, but it'll, yeah, it'll be enough. I mean, unless Chao Shen, I mean, even if Chao Shen runs because on Mystic he can't play it either, so I feel like this yeah. is just a win for Tom, unless there's somehow more healing for Chao Shen. I mean, yeah, the Chao Shen has the two healing from two silver, so it's gonna go to sixteen. This is gonna be barely not enough, it seems. Oof. Oh, okay, right, right, right. Um, he is going to go for the Blizzard. I guess he doesn't want his pop to be, or his block to be popped at the moment. Uh, Chalshin unable to do that at, right now. One damage off, actually. But, um... I mean, yeah, if he can, if he can some, somehow st stop here for a few turns, he only needs two more to just be able to ping Chalshin down, but... Not what we were expecting, you know, going into this game, and this would go to a slugfest here. I mean, Once one Reno would just basically win the game for Tom, though, right? So Almost, but, you know, if you flip that around, though. Right. In any case, Tom has, a, has an option here uh, to go for the fireballs to face and then hope that he draws into something. Though, what can he draw into? A Frostbolt? Uh, I think he's used both Ice Lances, right? Use both ice lances, yeah. yeah um, so you can draw into a fire frostbolt. He doesn't have roaring torch in his deck. There's potential for, I believe, a pyroblast, right? Uh, but I don't think people generally run that if they're running Reno. I think pinging face is the correct play. There's no way to go about not having lethal, and if you, right. if you don't have lethal, it's going to come down to what is it? Yeah, tough decking it next turn or, or losing. But two health, don't, don't feel good about that as a. Is there a heal a Murloc? Uh, we, all, we all know that there's not. There's a charge Murloc, there's not a heal Murloc. So, <laughs> there's uh, a drawing Murloc, though. There's the Sylphin, uh, Spirit Walker, and but then that's you'd actually... To, you'd have to sacrifice your own Murloc, which I think is impossible. But uh, yeah, Chao Shen just going to pop the block. I uh, imagine he's not going to play anything. There's no real reason to. And just pass the turn and hope that Tom doesn't draw any damage here. Go, comes down to this. Chao Shen is praying. Blood Mage Thanos going to draw off of this. Can't be Power Blast anymore. And uh, is, is that Reno? It says Reno. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> Poor guy. Wait, oh, does I it go? So... Oh, it went off. It, yeah, it went off. Okay. I feel so bad for Chaos and 29 health here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and Tom just ex static, really happy about it. He looks exhausted here. Wow, that top deck Reno with the exact mana too. Oh my goodness. 
So, Chaoshin, what do you even do here? Do you just go face? If he goes face, he's dead, by the way. Because uh, Tom can use Flame Strike. Looks like he's just going to use the uh, quality. Looks like we're having a bit of a lag issue. So, he's going to go quality, quality Consecrate. No uh, use for that anymore. Imagine he's going to go for the Morlock plus Hero Power just to get as much damage as possible, I think. I think you need as much damage as possible, right? Hello? Did we, uh... Yeah, that's true. Um, now, right. what, what could he possibly want here on top of that? That's a tough call. Uh, in terms of filling up the board, he doesn't maybe want to fill up the board. I think, yeah, the Monarch is just more aggressive. Oh, wow. and the Frostbolt, Frostbolt in the Bolt. end. And, so uh, lucky, yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, to be fair, if he had drawn that Frostbolt instead of the Reno, uh, that could have been something uh, that allowed him to take the win. But, yeah, Tom does take the win. Keep in mind, that is uh, his a favored matchup for him, so not too surprising in the end. But uh, so close for Chaoshin to be able to take that victory. Um, in the end, it's going to be 2-1 in favor of Tom. And... Uh, for Chaoshan fans, I mean, he does have a reasonable chance against this Hunter. His Reno Warlock will be doing pretty well, and his Paladin does have a lot of heals, as we saw there. It's going to be extremely draw dependent. He'll need something uh, like the Demon Wrath. He gets the Chow, though. That's a massive uh, start. That's definitely uh, something going in the right direction here. But talk about, about the last game. Chaoshan seems not... Like he, he isn't very confident in the booth here, playing, uh, he's moving around, around, around a lot, uh, a bit emotional to every top deck. Now, we look at the last game, he was way, way ahead in the early game. Then Tom top decks the Frost Nova and, and gets back in the driver's seat, gets the Antonidas, then Chaosin fights back with the heal bot and the Leon hands, gets the, the commanding lead, has him on one HP, and just loses it again. So. Feel really bad for Chaoshan here. He had it twice and lost it twice. <laughs> yeah, just so crazy to even just recap that, right? Uh, Chaoshan, he has uh, the zombie Chao in hand, which is what you want, especially going first. It's about the strongest play you can make against an aggressive deck by getting that out before they even can make a play. So, uh, but yeah, this is uh, just to keep in mind, guys. Uh, every game matters. So even if you don't win overall uh, in your your series, it's important to get as many games as possible because there have been ties. Uh, both uh, both of, there was a three way tie on the first day, and there were actually two uh, two two way ties yesterday. And uh, it will matter how many games you win against certain opponents. Um, so yeah, Chao Shen going with his Warlock first to make sure that he tries to get this win. Even if he goes down in the end, it's important to you know go down 2-3 instead of 1-3. Uh, Chao Shen doing his best Life Coach impression, wondering whether or not to play the Zombie Chao, but uh, that's it's probably the best anti-aggro start in the game is turn 1 Zombie Chao, so I don't really know. I guess maybe he wants to be tilting Tom a bit. Always the mind gives the Chao Shen, yeah. Game after game here. Goes for the It doesn't fake the fake the uh, no Chao scenario though. No, he may have to live tap here. The mortal call is so good. This is just everything like Chao Shen would need. Yeah, has the uh, Farce here for the next turn. Doesn't have a 2 drop, unfortunately. Uh, the perfect draw here would be that Dark Peddler in turn 2. But uh, Chao Shen bluffing here that he has something to play, though I doubt uh, he would. <laughs> I think if he had a two drop here, he would play it, unless it's you know dark bomb. So, or I mean, and if it's dark bomb, you're not considering that either. So, looks like Chalice might be peddler. Gonna... I mean, yeah, it could be peddler, but you would just play the peddler. Yeah, over I think you just play the peddler, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it looks like oh, there's the uh, unseeable goal. Wow, that's something that he would want to play. <laughs> that is a really anti aggro card, but uh, yeah, a lot of options here. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get these uh, the uh, unseeable goal on too. But other than that, looking pretty solid for him. I mean, yeah, Chaoshan can't complain about luck, you know, after this game, everything going right for him here. This couldn't be any better. And in Gang Boss on top of that, wow. yeah, the, I yeah, think this has to be Gang Boss. Yeah, I mean, Farseer, obviously you heal, but uh, that just gets cleared by the uh, the Eagle Horn Bow, so no real reason to go for that over the Inking Boss. She can heal later. Mm -hmm. But I mean, top of it, it's still going to be rough. I feel like this is favorite for Tom. Uh... Now there is, <laughs> he is so, so many one-cost minions. 
Yeah, wait, wait, I mean, or one health minion, sorry. He can just go for the uh, for the ghoul here and, and almost win the game on top of that. And Molten Giant on top of everything. Like, what is this? You just throw every single <laughs> anti he does, cut. He does need to pick up more healing than Farseer uh, sometime soon, though, to be fair. But, I mean, if this continues, he's going to be tough taking, you know. Reno. <laughs> he'll, put, he'll, he'll put a Belcher into Reno if this continues. All right, Jesus. well, it is important for him to make the absolute best uh, turn that he can right here. Uh, he's really, you know, wondering whether or not his opponent does have the L, and that would be huge if uh, Tom, for instance, top decks the L. And uh, he's guaranteed Chao Shen is to go down to 15 health. Looks like even going guaranteed down to uh, 13 health, it seems, right here. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, huge risk right here, putting that uh, that uh, Unstable Ghoul on the field, and Chao Shen now wondering whether or not he should clear one of these minions. I guess he's figuring, okay... Uh... My hand isn't going to be the best, so there's a risk involved in, in tapping, but there's also a big risk involved in not tapping and not getting that heal or that Oh top that no! I, he gets the top deck? Whoa. Are you kidding me? What is up here? Tom getting everything. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about how Chaosha was really lucky, but uh, that top deck owl basically negates everything. And now he's at 7 health! You know, this Molten Giant's not going to do anything if he just dies the following turn. Shadow Flame is... Well, Helpful, yeah. Yeah, it hurts but, him, so... But he dies anyway, I guess. But yeah, I mean, are we going to have to start a new hashtag here? Top Deck Tom. <laughs> this is happening again and again here. Yeah, right, so... Go I on mean... Twitter and show him you love, honestly. <laughs> top Deck Tom, hashtag Top Deck Tom. Right, so it looks like we're one damage off lethal for Tom, and uh, he is really worried about that Reno Jackson, it seems, because he put his head back, realizing that, you know, it could be trouble for him. Uh, a Huffer would be lethal, however, so maybe he goes for that, and uh, doesn't get the Huffer, which means that Chao Shen lives one more turn. Can he draw the Reno Jackson, or maybe even a heal bot? We see the graphic on screen. That is the key card. And Healbot is something. That's the second best card that he could have drawn here. So, still alive is Chao Shen, but uh, on his last legs, especially with those, you know, those uh, Leper Gnomes guaranteed dealing that, uh, those, the two damage each. But uh, yeah, Chao Shen has to navigate this turn uh, very carefully. I mean, I guess you just just clear everything up, right? Uh, throw in the Farseer and this Unstable Go play the heal bots, clear everything else out and hit 8 to face and maybe you can race if you don't pick up any more healing but uh, looking still pretty bad for Chao Shen. Gonna go down to 8 which means that Tom still doesn't have the requisite mana to finish him off. Has 6 damage in hand right now. Let's see if he picks something up that is going to be 1 damage off once more. And uh, yeah, gonna go for the uh, Wolf Rider instead of the Arcane Golem, just in case, doesn't want to give any mana. Um, Place it on the Taunt, I guess, yeah, I mean, also possibly... Mm, and that is it's going to be it. Enough, There's yeah. no healing in Chao Shen's hand, no way to get lethal, and no way to draw. So, uh, unfortunately for Chao Shen, it's going to be following here. Uh, I think he realizes it as well. And uh, just count up the damage. We're actually really close to maybe killing his opponent, but... Um, yeah, gonna fall short in the end. Gonna tap. And there was Reno! He gets Reno if he'd gone for the Arcane Golem. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, that's... If he the Arcane Golem, he would've lost. What is up here? Wow. So, yeah, that is absolutely insane. I don't think I would've even tapped there. That's gonna just make you tilt for the rest of the day. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, Tom takes it. Three games to one, and uh, our players who are in the lead right now are Tom and Clento. Actually, Tom is a bit ahead of Clento with that game score, having won his series three games to one, whereas Clento won three games to two. We are going to have that rematch from the Onog uh, Geico Summer Circuit uh, in the finals there, where Tom took the took that match four games to three. And uh, going to have that rematch next for you guys after this break, so you do not want to go anywhere. We're just uh, obviously we're piggybacking onto the tiny stream, so we're going to wait until they go to that break. But uh, man, what a series! Just now, <laughs> so unfortunate for Chaoshan. Two games in a row just uh, falls just short.
The game is a game. I will tell and played even slightly better. It was very close though. Both players bring their A game here and strong decks. But yeah, their Venolock just didn't end up working out. Uh, now, to talk about Tom versus Colento coming up here, we also see yep. Shadow versus Chao Shen, so both yeah, of the can, invites uh, going strong. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that after this break. Uh, just for now, uh, you guys can enjoy these nice highlights that the uh, Chinese production has cooked up for you. So, see you guys then. You do not want to miss Colento versus Tom.